In this video, we're going to look at Kirchhoff's laws applied to an electrical network. So Kirchhoff's laws, um, there's two pieces. First of all, current in equals current out. Now what we mean by current, um, when we have a junction, we have current coming in and we usually denote current with I sub 1, I sub 2, and so forth. So if you have I1 coming in, that's got to equal I2 going out. So current in equals current out. And then the second piece of Kirchhoff's law says that the sum of current times resistance has to equal voltage. And that's around a closed loop in the network. So resistance is denoted by this little squiggly line that's a resistor in the network. It's denoted with the capital R in terms of our equations, so that's our resistance. It's measured in ohms, and our voltage, um, a lot of times in a network we represent it with a little battery, and we put some measure of uh, number of volts on that battery. So again, around our closed loop, the sum of current times resistance has to equal voltage. So let's use those two laws for a particular example. So here's an example. Here's a, an electrical network, and we've got uh, A, B, C, and D. So at A, we've got um, volts, and let's label that with 24 volts for this particular problem. I'll put a V there. And at B, that's a junction, so we've got current I1 coming in. We've got current I2 coming in, and I3 is going out over here at C, letter C, we've got another battery, and let's label that with some voltage. Uh, for this problem, let's do 25 volts there. And over here at junction D, again, we've got current in and current out. Now, we've also got some resistors in this network, and those are labeled with ohms, so 4 ohms and 2 ohms and so forth. Okay, so let's apply Kirchhoff's law number 1, and that says current in equals current out. So at B, the current in, we've got I1 coming in, I2 is coming in, and that better equal I3 going out. And similarly at D, we've got another junction, um, we've got I3 coming in, and going out we have I1 and I2. So that doesn't really add any new information, um, so we don't really need to keep that piece. So let's erase that just to save some space on the screen here. And now let's do Kirchhoff's law number two. So we've got the sum of the resistance around a closed loop. So let's look at this uh, closed loop going around the top in a counterclockwise direction. So we've got current times resistance, so we've got um, I1 times 4 ohms, so I1 times 4 ohms. Um, then we come down on this middle piece, we've got 2 ohms times I3. Okay, And then kind of going back up this other side, we've got 3 ohms and that's times I1. And that has to equal the voltage, which is 24 for that top loop. On the bottom loop, let's see what we have down here. So this one's going in a clockwise direction. Around we go in a clockwise direction. Um, for that bottom loop, we have 2 ohms times I3. And on the bottom edge here, we've got 5 ohms times I2. And adding those up, the sum of the current times resistance has to equal the total voltage, which we said was 25 for that bottom loop. So this gives us a system of equations, and we're back in familiar territory for linear algebra. Um, our equations in terms of I1, I2, and I3 look like 1, 1, negative 1. Second equation, we get a 4. Actually, if we add up the I1 and the, the two I1s there, collect like terms, we get a 7, 0, 2, and a 24. And then in our bottom equation here, we have 0 for I1, 5, I2, 2, I3, 
equals 25. And I see I have a little typo right here. So let's correct that. Great. So now we RREF this. MATLAB is probably a great choice to use. And what we find is that we get 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So we get the identity matrix for the coefficient piece. And uh, we should find that we get I1 equal to 2, I2 equal to 3, and I3 equal to 5. So let's just write that down. We get a unique solution. And we're able to solve for the current on each of those edges.